There are thousands of Instagrammable bodies of water in the world, and if you're bored of seeing countless picture after picture of them, then this video is for you. Because not all lakes and rivers are quite so pretty, and we think those ones deserve some attention too. Today we're showing you the most polluted bodies of water on Earth. It could be easy to get caught up in these bodies of water, so we recommend staying far away from the edge. Why not get caught up in the hub's great videos instead? Simply click the subscribe button before we begin. Rio Tinto, Spain Despite the bright red color of the river, Rio Tinto actually translates to Tainted River. It runs around 70 kilometers northeast of Huelva in the Andalusia region of Spain. It's also considered one of the oldest mining districts in the whole world. It was first used for mining in the year 3000 BC, before being reopened by the Spanish government in 1724. Thanks to this vast mining work, the river, which was once home to many types of fish or other aquatic life, is now home to no one at all. With a pH level of only 2, its acidity makes it far too dangerous for anyone to even dip a finger in the water. For comparison, it's exactly as acidic as stomach acid, meaning chemical burns are almost guaranteed for anyone who accidentally makes contact with this dangerous body of water. In fact, the dark red hues of the river are a result of the copper and iron that fill the soil on the banks. But Rio Tinto wasn't always this way, and the government is doing its best to bring it back to how it used to be. The mining district officially closed in 2001, but it's thought that too much damage has been done to ever restore Rio Tinto to how it used to be many hundreds of years ago. Sitaram River, Indonesia Widely regarded as one of the most polluted rivers in the world, the Sitaram River in West Java, Indonesia has slowly become more and more dangerous thanks to nearby factories. There are thought to be more than 2,000 industrial facilities in the region of the river, mainly of the textile mill and garment type. Every time one of these factories builds up enough wastewater, it's poured directly into the river. The worst part is that the Indonesian government is fully aware of the practice and allows it, because the chemicals aren't thought to be too hazardous. Charities like Greenpeace have tried to fight back and called on the Indonesian High Court to stop allowing factories to dump their rubbish into the already polluted river. Sadly, the country's three biggest factories, PT Kahatex, PT Insan Sanden Internusa, and PT Five Star Textile, have all tried to fight back and said without dumping the water, they'll have no choice but to close the factories. But aside from big corporations choosing to throw their wastewater into the river, the families living alongside it contribute too. Household trash and human waste are thrown into the river because residents think it's either that or burn it. While some local residents try and do their bit to remove any rubbish they spot, Many just consider it part of daily life to see bottles and garbage floating along. Tualatin River, Oregon Much is being done to bring the Tualatin River in Oregon back to a healthy state, but it's still not enough. While it used to be far more dangerous, there's still debate as to whether or not it's safe to swim in the river, and many people don't recommend it. After all, there are plenty of other rivers to swim in, so why risk your health by entering this one? For a start, the river is filled with blue-green algae. In 1989, it was the first river to fail the Clean Waters Act safety requirements. The last major outbreak was in 2008 when the entire river turned an almost fluorescent color. It's thought that around a dozen dogs died each year from swimming in the river due to ingesting the dangerous algae. Sure, most humans know not to swallow the stuff, but sadly, we can't say the same for our furry friends. Once ingested, the algae can grow quickly, leading to sickness and diarrhea, or in severe cases, paralysis and death. Local river services try to combat the algae growth by diluting it with fresh water, but it's not a permanent solution. Nowadays, a team of volunteers try to educate people about the river and encourage them to learn and care about it. Lake Karachai, Western Russia If algae or a high pH scale wasn't enough to put you off of visiting a river, then maybe the high dose of radiation you'll get if you visit Lake Karachai in Western Russia will be enough. Sure, it's in a picturesque area, but just standing on the shore for an hour would give you a radiation dose of 600 Grontogen, which is more than enough needed to kill you. The river sits near the modern-day border of Kazakhstan and is based next to one of the largest and leakiest nuclear facilities in the world. Nobody knew just how bad it was until President Boris Yeltsin allowed access in 1992, when it was declared the most polluted area on the whole planet. It turned out that for many years, nuclear engineers had been dumping their radioactive waste into the river, and the water had been unable to properly dilute it. The combination of dangerous elements aren't likely to disappear anytime soon either, because two of the components, strontium-90 and cesium-137, 
each have a half-life of approximately 30 years. Since then, those who live in the region are thought to have a 21% increase of getting cancer, 41% chance of leukemia, and a general 25% higher chance of their offspring having birth defects. Lake Kivu, Africa Known as Killer Lake, the scenic surroundings of Lake Kivu, Africa are very deceiving. You could almost definitely get a few great Instagram shots here, but you might die doing so. The lake straddles the border of the Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda and contains far more chemicals than you might expect. It's thought to hold more than 300 cubic kilometers of carbon dioxide and 60 cubic kilometers of methane. These are trapped in layers 80 meters below the surface, but scientists are worried they might not stay down there. Geological or volcanic events could easily disturb the water, leading to a deadly outbreak of these dangerous chemicals. You might be wondering what's so dangerous if a bit of carbon dioxide escapes from the water into the air. Carbon dioxide is denser than oxygen, meaning it has the ability to smother everything in its path. The last time something like this happened, in Lake Nyos in Cameroon in 1986, more than 1,700 people were smothered by the huge outbreak of gases. Lake Kivu is around 350 times larger than Nyos, meaning the amount of damage that could be done is almost at an unimaginable level. Everyone is terrified of this lake, but nobody knows the solution. The Blue Lagoon, Derbyshire, UK We've now learned about a river so acidic it could hurt you, but what about a body of water at the other end of the spectrum? Now we're taking you across the country to the United Kingdom, where the Blue Lagoon sits in the north of the country. This lagoon has a pH level of 11.3. In comparison, household bleach has a level of 12.3, and we all know how much damage bleach has the potential to do. The body of water is known as the Blue Lagoon because of its turquoise color, which has attracted many swimmers. Unfortunately, it's about as far from the Bahamas as you could get, and local experts have urged people to avoid the water for fear it could lead to skin complaints from the highly alkaline contents. This color comes from the caustic chemicals in the quarry stone, so although it's not a majorly man-made problem, it's still a good idea to avoid it. Although those who sensibly choose not to swim in the water seem to use it as a dumping ground, so it's thought to also contain a large amount of garbage, dead animals, and even vehicles. In order to truly keep people away, officials decided to dye the water black, a surefire way to keep even the hardiest of swimmers out. Matanza Riachuelo River, Argentina Around 20,000 people are affected by the dangerous pollution in Argentina's Matanza Riachuelo River. At more than 60 kilometers long, an estimated 15,000 industries empty their wastewater into the river. The length of it covers 14 municipalities in Buenos Aires, making it difficult for officials to crack down on those intent on destroying the water. The Riachuelo River, as it's known locally, contains higher levels of many chemicals, including zinc, lead, copper, nickel, and total chromium than is safe. The latter has a mean value in soil of 1,141 ppm, which is almost five times the recommended amount of 220 ppm. Sadly, the river is still a main source of water for people who live nearby, and around 60% of the people who live near its basin have to survive the results of the pollution. Those who have to use the water to survive can find themselves suffering from diarrhea, respiratory diseases, and in the worst cases, cancer. 80% of the water tested was found to be unsuitable for drinking, but with it being the only nearby source, it's an inevitable prospect for local residents. In 2008, 5.2 billion was dedicated to helping clean up the river, but it hasn't led to any major improvements. Cuyahoga River, Ohio. The Cuyahoga River has gone down in history, but not for its scenic looks or fascinating wildlife. Nope, this river is famous for being so polluted it actually caught fire, and not just once. The first time it caught fire was in 1868. Since then, it's happened another 12 times. Have you ever heard of a river so polluted it's actually set alight 13 times? Running through Cleveland, the river is home to industrial pollution due to bad sewer and waste disposal regulation. Filled with debris and oil, it was always a risky combination and was basically asking for trouble. Its most potent blaze happened in 1952, which caused more than $1.3 million in damages. However, the most dangerous time was in 1912, when five people died as a result of the fire. In 1969, when it set alight, the fire reached heights of over five stories and lasted between 20 and 30 minutes. If that's not a river screaming out to be cleaned up, then we're not sure what is. After the 1969 fire, the government decided they needed to do something about the damage and decided to clean up the river to the best of their ability. Although it's still far from perfect, it's now home to around 60 species of fish and there hasn't been another fire since 1969. Buriganga River, Bangladesh 
One of the most problematic things about the Buri Ganga River in Bangladesh is that its pollution flows into other nearby rivers. This means that what was once a problem for a singular river is quickly turning into a widespread problem for everyone in the nearby areas. The Buri Ganga River flows through Dhaka and is one of the most polluted in Bangladesh. Years of dumping industrial and human waste has turned a once beautiful riverbed into little more than black goop. It used to be home to many types of fish, all of which have now died. Although it's still possible to cross the river, it's not advised because of the horrendous smell that follows. The river is part of a large crisscross of rivers which covers the land. There are hundreds of rivers and streams which all flow into each other, taking the Buriganga's problem and spreading it deep into other sections of Bangladesh. Around 140 million people rely on the river for water to drink and to wash their clothes in. Increasingly, people are dying or becoming seriously ill because of the rising levels of pollution. Around 1.5 million cubic meters of wastewater enters the river every day from the 7,000 industrial units nearby. Another half a million cubic meters comes from different sources too. Marilao River, the Philippines. The Marilao River is part of the Marilao Mekawayan and Obando River system. Just like our last polluted body of water, this means the problem doesn't just rest with one river, but flows into surrounding ones. The Marilao Riverbed is home to hundreds of thousands of people and also lots of different industrial buildings. This is where the problem lies. Not only are industrial components like carcinogenic hexavalent chromium and lead poured into the water, but so is human waste from the local families. The growing problem has built up local media attention and environmental bodies are still trying to figure out the extent of the existing damage. $300,000 has been given to the cause, which aims to clean up the polluted water. But this project was started in 2005 and not much has changed yet. About 250,000 people live around Manila, where the river is based. 50,000 of these are children under the age of six, and experts are still not sure how this could affect their growth and well-being. All of these people rely on the water from this polluted river to wash themselves and also to feed their crops in order to survive. Not only does this affect the plants they're growing, but it also makes the fish from the water increasingly dangerous. We hope you enjoyed learning about these bodies of water today. Make sure to check back soon at the Hub to learn more about all your favorite subjects. Thanks!